We classify our models into three main areas, people models, system models, and data models, or as we like to call it, PSD. The models in each of these areas work together to create the whole picture of the system. People models are all about focusing on who is using the system and how they are using it. System models are all about focusing on the systems themselves, what they look like, and how they interact. Data models focus on the information that the end users care about and the life cycle of the information itself. It takes some analysis or thinking on the part of the business analyst to know which models to use on any given project. We should emphasize that sticking to predefined templates or always using the same model won't always lead to the best results. For example, always using just process flows or just use cases is a bad idea. The value in this categorization is that you can use it to guide your methodology on the project. You start out your project by remembering that you need to use at least one people, one systems, and one data model almost always. And in the middle of the project, as you realize you have found an interesting data issue, you pull out the list of data models and select an additional one of those. We have a handout on our website that you can download for a reminder of all the possible models in the people, systems, and data categories. This is our people, systems, data organization of the models and some examples of each of the types of models. There are more models than just these. I'm just giving you a few examples to get an idea of the different types of models. We will go into much more detail on all of these later. There are also models that we use to put structure around information, but they don't really help us to get to specific requirements. They just help us to complete other models. For example, a traceability matrix or affinity diagrams. They don't fit well into this organization, but they're still very useful in visualizing requirements. Within our people systems data models, the top level models, those shown in bold, bound the problem space. What I mean by this is that org charts, context diagrams, and BDDs can be made 100% complete with due diligence. For example, the org chart can be taken from the corporate directory or the user population taken from the list of existing customers. And you want to be 100% certain that you have captured all of the possible users. Otherwise, important requirements could be overlooked during development, and you won't find out until you try to launch the application, and the forgotten users are very unhappy. Similarly, context diagrams can be done in a way to guarantee they are 100% complete. You can actually work with architects or support staff to get 100% complete lists of all the systems in the organization. Then, put them on a map and determine which ones interact or need to interact with the system you are working on. You may have to get into existing systems code to find the interactions, but it's actually possible to do so. Further, you can identify literally every possible business data object in the existing system by working backwards from the data level. In the end, you may not need to do the analysis on all of them, but at least you know you have a complete list to start from. But to contrast this, as you generate use cases or decision trees, you can't be 100% certain that you have captured all of them. If you sit down and only work at that level, it's just much more challenging. So the goal is to start at the highest level where you know it's complete and then work down from there to get more detailed. 